the rawest and the realest WMMA podcast on the planet. This is Savage WMMA Fan Podcast number 25. Let's go. Everyone is still terrified of Shachinko at 125 pounds. God damn. This, this, this is terrible. Oh, when is this shit going to end? Somebody help me out, okay? Who, who got the answer, okay? In what book do I got to open to solve this motherfucking problem with the flyweight division? Know what I'm talking about? Like, okay, so check this out. This is this is this is the pattern with a lot of these fucking girls at 125 pounds, right? Uh, they say they want to contend for a championship. You know, they get in the interview process, and motherfuckers ask them, you know, do you think you can handle a, a Valentina? You know, as a fighter, then they start, you know. Spewing about, oh, I could do this, my striking, yip, 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 blah, 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 that, or my whatever. You know, it's like they think their smile is good enough to beat the bullet. You know what I mean? And it, it just, it's terrible. And, and then they go and win a fight after ducking another fight. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Grizo. And then when it's time, you know, for the big stage, you know, they hand you the mic. It's, it's, it's time for the fucking call out. As soon as somebody say something about, well, um, what about Valentina? I mean, uh, you think you're ready to, to take on the champ? Uh, uh, could you please repeat the question? I mean, God damn, what is wrong with these girls? I mean, you've competed your whole career for this. It's, 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 it's like the top half of that whole 125-pound division is just like silly putty, or jello. It's just they shake and fucking scare, okay? Ain't this why you here? I mean, ain't this the fucking fight game? I don't get it. I mean, look, listen to me. Listen to me closely. It don't make no damn sense for you to do all that fighting and do all that strategic, you know, uh, training to learn how to, you know, get somewhere in this fucking, you know, organization only for when somebody brings up Valentina's name and all of a sudden you're like, um, 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 let's uh, do an elimination match. Yeah, let's just do an elimination match. Like, Valentina got to sit on her fucking couch all day, eating fucking bonbons, still in better shape than most of these fighters, and wait, and just keep fucking waiting. Like, Valentina would probably fight four or five times a year if they let her, and if motherfuckers were willing, but they're not willing. They're not fucking willing because as soon as somebody say, hey, you should, shot, you, you, you should fight Valentina Shachinko, all of a sudden these motherfuckers are like, why? I don't want to fight her right now. Get my sister fight her or something. I just, I just, I don't get it. I don't get it, man. I mean, look. Look, why don't you just go ahead and just take that ass whooping? Just go on and take the fucking ass whooping. And I don't like making excuses for these motherfuckers. Like, well, you know, they, they just need one more fight. What are you going to learn in one more fight before you fight Valentina? I'm going to tell you what you're going to learn. You ain't going to learn shit. You ain't going to learn shit by being a chump and backing down from the champ. Nothing gets learned that way, okay? I'm sorry. These, 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 they've been in the division too long. They've been fighting too long. These are professional fighters. I think they should go ahead and, and, and here's the thing. If they're afraid of losing stock, 
then they're going to continue to lose stock by looking like a coward. How about that? They lose more fucking stock by being cowards than they do than potentially going up there and getting wrecked by Valentina. You know what I'm saying? Like, who are they going to get in there with that's going to equal a Valentina Shevchenko simulation style fight? No one, okay? I don't give a damn if it was Lennox, Tyson, Ali. There is no fucking civilization. You have to go in there and conquer that motherfucking mountain. But see, they can't conquer the shit, the, the, the shit within. They just, they just can't do it. All right. And listen, I'm not saying that they're not professionals and that when the fight actually happens, they're not willing. Most of them will. Most of them will. But also, most of them will do everything they can to avoid the fucking fight. And that's why I'm pissed off. That's why I'm so pissed off. I'm, listen, it's been how many months? Shit. These motherfuckers are still afraid of Valentina. It don't make no sense. You would think Valentina is literally made out of fucking Kevlar, steel, anti antium, uh, whatever the shit, Wolverine, <laughs> whatever that imaginary steel. Like, you would think the bullet was bulletproof. At 125 pounds. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I, I know I'm very uh, sensational about Valentina, but I ain't that fucking sensational, okay? They, they, these girls got to get a fucking grip, okay? Valentina, like, come on. Come on. Let's do it. Let's just fight. Let's fight tomorrow. These motherfuckers are like, nah. Nah, I'm good, B. I'm good on that, but... uh. Nice belt, though. It, it looks real nice around your waist. But, uh, you know, ain't no point in me going there and getting my motherfucking ass kicked. I mean, it is what it is. It is what it is. And at this point, y'all, I don't feel sorry for these motherfuckers. I don't feel sorry for none of them. I don't feel sorry for Manon. I don't feel sorry for Grazo. I, I just don't. I don't. I've never seen a fighter this. I mean, Cyborg, you get pretty close. And, and a lot of people are afraid to fight Amanda Nunes, but most, yeah, it's hard to say. But, but Valentina, it looks worse. It looks real worse because I guess maybe because, you know, they, it, it's just been so consistent. You know, and, and Valentina is, is the smallest out of the three. And maybe, maybe, maybe it's just perception. Don't get me wrong. Valentina is quick as shit. She has, you know, considerable power. Especially at 125 pounds, but it's just, uh, this makes the savage sad. This is some sad ass shit. Oh, boy. Anyway, there's nothing really going on right now this week. I, I couldn't find anything. But, you know, how about some early thoughts on, um, yeah. I just had this thought about, you know, Santos being the only person that wants to, you know, fight Valentina because um, she already was in there with her. And it was a it was, a, you know, a fairly competitive fight. And um, I want to see that fight again. I want to see it again. Maybe she's calling her out a little too soon. I don't know. Nobody else wanted. Everybody else is just a scared little bitch. So, so why not give her the fucking fight? But anyway, let, let, let's talk about some upcoming fights. And um, let's talk about uh, Miss Carla Esparza, the cookie monster herself, versus uh, Whaley Jung. And let me say this about this fight, okay? I don't give a fuck how you or I feel about Carla Esparza, okay? This won't be necessarily an easy fight for Wei Li, okay? We we seen Wei Li do a real good job against Bojangle Check uh, a few months back, and um, nice spinning elbow finish, just just beautiful. Just had fucking Bojangle Check seeing stars, you know. <laughs> anyway, um, the bottom line is is that. It's going to be a competitive fight because you just don't know what Carla Sparza, okay? For one, I don't think Carla Sparza is, is going to be foolish enough to try to stand with Whaley. 
Not for long. Not for long. I think if Whaley, if not Whaley, if Cookie Monster wants to win this fight, she has to make it ugly. That, that, that's really the only chance I see. I, I'd, I'd be surprised. I mean, maybe she could catch her with overhand right or something if, you know, she mix in the wrestling just right. But mostly, I think she needs to, you know, get this fight to the ground because uh, I, I think Whaley hits just a little too hard and she won't be as um, hesitant as Rose was in, you know, her last fight against Carla, you know. It, it it just looked like, you know, the bell rang and Rose was just, it was like she was at the, the, the first fucking five seconds of the fight. You know, when you're filling your opponent out for like five fucking rounds, you know, it was absolutely amazing. But anyway, yeah, this fight, Carla will be forced to really fight hard and you know it's going to get interesting it's going to get interesting within about 60 seconds because um ask Bojangle check about Whaley and her striking so uh it could get ugly for Carla so it's going to be an interesting fight I mean Carla is underestimated as far as her her, her strength and ability um again I don't know really how she's going to like finish. Like she just she would literally just have to wear Whaley out. I mean, because her 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 ground and pound is just trash for the most part. Okay, I saw what she did to Yon. All right, I ain't gonna take that shit away from Carla. But again, she's she's going to have to really wear on Whaley to have a chance of getting a stoppage. But um. <laughs> Whaley is my early pick, but right now it is very close. This is a very close fight, so um, we'll see. We will see what happened in this fight, but right now I got Whaley Jung, and as of now, <sighs> I got it by a late stoppage, but I can see it going by a decision, but over time, we got time to talk more about this fucking shit. So, um, so Marina Rodriguez versus Amanda Lemos. Another fight to where it, it's, it's, it's a toss up. It's a motherfucking toss up because both of these girls are excellent strikers. It's hard to say who's the better striker. I mean, they both are relatively patient. Patient, but I would say uh, Amanda Lemos is a little bit more methodical, a little bit more selective with her shot. Sometimes it seems like she's a little too selective, but but I I tend to like uh, Rodriguez's shot, her her combos a little bit more. Yeah, she throws a little bit better combos and. What would be interesting in this fight to me is, like, once they get close or in the clinch, you know, who will be stronger there? I mean, again, I I believe Rodriguez has the height advantage. I'm not 100% sure how about how much. But, I mean, in terms of power, in terms of powerful striking, they're, they're both up there. But I'm going to give the edge to Amanda Limo. So, um. Maybe if she can keep her distance, you know, Marina Rodriguez, that is, maybe, 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 maybe she can win her fight, win this fight if she stays on the uh, outside. But um, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck is going to happen. Uh, I'm rooting for Lemos in this fight. I do like both of these fighters. Um, I, I wasn't always the biggest fucking Marina Rodriguez fan, but she's warmed. She's she she she's warmed on me a little bit, and she's been giving some fun fights. But right now, I, I gotta fucking go with Amanda Lemos, and I'm going with a late second round stoppage. But we'll see, cause I'm this is fifty fifty fight, y'all. Any fucking thing happen on this motherfucking fight? All right. 
So I was looking at a shout out combo breaker ninety nine. Um, he had a uh, live stream recently, and there was a conversation about basically who holds responsibility for fight promotion, right? For fights being promoted. And this has been a long conversation on this channel and in many fucking WMMA related channels and whatnot. Because the the, the men are are terrible, generally speaking, at fight promotion and WMMA, it seems like most of them motherfuckers can't even spell the word self-promotion. So I, I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's a collective failure personally. I feel like the UFC being a fight promotion should be promoting their fight, fighters more. But I think maybe what they could also do is encourage them their fighters to actually, I don't know, self-promote, you know, you know, work together, but they don't want to fucking work together because working together causes motherfuckers to ask you more questions. And since it's a dirty game, at least the way it's been um, executed relative to fighter pay, uh, I don't see that shit ever happening or, or or it only happens but so much. But then again, you know, these fighters are lazy as fuck. You know, they can't tweet out that they want to fight somebody. But they can dress up and fucking, you know, flower cut, uh, fucking fl flower, you know, printed fucking thongs and shit on the beach. You know, they can do all this other shit, but they, they can't call anybody out. So, I mean, I mean, I know people say that, well, you know, because Wei Lee fighting, this is already going to be, that's going to promote the fight enough, but I don't know. I don't know if that should be relied upon. And then at the end of the motherfucking day, Wei Li will speak up. And, you know, and, and, and Carla a few months back did, you know, post a fucking uh, picture of her with the belt and Wei Li crying after she lost the rose the first time. You know, I don't even think Carla couldn't have posted that fucking picture. She just couldn't have. That that had to be PR. That had to be her team because she just don't seem like she got the gall or the guts to do no shit like that. Know what I'm talking about? So I don't know. It's quiet right now. Um, but hey, it it is what it is. It is what it is, and you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. I talk about it, but I just I don't I don't really stress about it like that because you know. It's their motherfucking career. They, they do what the fuck they want. So hopefully either way with these two matchups, we, we get two really good fights all the way through. So, yeah. Um, I'm not going to spend a, a long time on this one. but uh, So Dana White and the UFC have decided to ban bet fighters betting on themselves. And... Um, which is kind of a fucking stupid idea because as a fighter, you should always bet on yourself. Know what I'm talking about. But basically saying that it's a, uh, um, let me see if I can find this shit for you real quick. It's considered an, um, where is this shit at? Anyway, it, it, it doesn't look right. It, what do you say? It doesn't look good. More optics than anything. Uh, look, my optics of the corruption of the UFC, you know, I, I'm a nearsighted fuck. And, you know, I don't really give a fuck about what he's talking about. You know, I, I think you should be able to do what the fuck you want. I mean, you're an independent contractor, so I think you should be able to bet on yourself. I personally don't give a fuck if you bet on baseball. <laughs> Shout out to P. Rose. I mean, this ain't quite the same situation, but you know what the fuck the savage is saying. If you don't want motherfuckers betting on themselves, then maybe you should, you know, fork up a little bit more um, security blankets in the form of, you know, money. But I don't know, man. I just thought that was a silly fucking article that I came across. But anyway, enough of this bullethead motherfucker.
Now, this is this is the main event. This this is the shit that I've I've been meaning to get around to. All right, let's talk about Manon Serio. And um, if I'm mispronouncing Manon's last name, I don't really give a shit right now because um, I'm 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 upset. I'm kind of fucking upset at Manon because um, apparently Manon um, only, you know, made up in her mind that she wanted to be a fucking UFC champion. Apparently it was a dream or something or, you know, you know, she got manipulated, manipulated. (laughs) She got took advantage of by her fucking uh, trainers and uh, promoters and by the fans. And, you know, this is some type of fucking, you know, Truman Show shit. Like, this isn't really Manon Ferriot's life. This is actually somebody else's life, another fighter's life. Because, you know, she, she doesn't want to fight for the title, apparently. You know? I mean, she went in there and, and handled Caitlyn Chikagian, you know, pretty nicely. I mean, she didn't get the fucking finish she promised, but, you know, she had no business saying that shit anyway if she wasn't going to go for the fucking finish. So I don't know. I don't really fucking know. But I do know that, you know, it's interesting. It's really fucking interesting that she talks all this shit and at the end of the day, she didn't really want to be a champion. I, I, I guess she, I guess it was, listen, listen, I'm not trying to be fucking funny. I'm just saying, like, why would you fight the number one contender in the division where the champion is hungry for competition and think that they would not expect you to want to call out a champ? This shit doesn't really make any fucking sense to me. And, you know, and, and you know, in this article, um, I'll, I'll leave it below, but she was saying some shit about, you know, how this would be good for the for the division and the fans. I'm like, ha ha. Now the fighters care about the fucking fans. Now you care about the condition and the strength of the condition. I mean, the pardon me, the strength of the division, you know. Like, I just wish these motherfuckers would just be more selfish. Like, just flat out say, listen, uh, I wanted to fight Shakane in because it was all about me. And I'm ducking Valentina Shachinko because this shit is all about me. So you can continue to ask me about fighting Shachinko. I'm not planning on fighting Shachinko. Not right now. Know what I'm saying? Like, why don't they just do that? You know, like, you care about the fans. Well, Manon, if you care about what the fans want, why don't you give Valentina somebody to fight? How about that shit? Know what I'm talking about? Like, what the fuck does Grazo? And, and, and listen, I, Grazo is worse. Grazo is much worse because she ducked Manon. So I, I don't really give a shit about, you know, uh, Grazo, you know, getting, you know, a, a, another fight before she fights Valentina. I would prefer she go up there first and get her ass whooped by the bullet. That, that, that would make me feel, you know, so much better about the situation. But at the end of the motherfucking day, Manon, I just, I just don't like the excuses. And like they all keep saying the same shit. And, and then also in this article, you know, you know, she's talking about how when Valentina fought, you know, Caitlyn, you know, she didn't really strike with her. I mean, watch the fight again, Manon. I mean, was 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 Caitlyn striking really giving Valentina that much fucking trouble? Was the quote unquote quote unquote best fucking uh, boxer in the division? Was she really giving Valentina Chingo that much trouble? I don't fucking think so. 
But the problem is that Monona's acting like if she go in there, she can't lose the same way that Kaylin did. So excuses are nooses on which contenders hang themselves in this fucking division. So I'm just tired. I'm really tired, and I just wish somebody in that fucking division would step up. Someone with some talent that's kind of been on a win streak. Just, just step the fuck up because, you know, if, 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 if nobody wants to fight Valentina Fuchinko in that damn division, why don't we just award her another title defense for every time these motherfuckers duck her? My God. So, um, it's time for the Savage of the Week. And because I'm so fucking pissed off at Manon, I believe the Savage of the Week has to be Taya Santos. Why is it Taya Santos? Simple. Because she's the only person that want to fight Valentina. I mean, I mean, Caitlyn kind of wanted it. But, you know, you saw what happened to her ass. But... And here's another thing. As far as I know, nobody in the history of that division has ever called Valentina Zuchingo out outright. Never. I challenge you. Put it in the fucking comments. Who has ever called her ass out in the cage? Who has called her out? Not accept the match, but demand the match. Who has done it? And don't use motherfuckers who would lose the fight in 15 seconds. I don't even give a fuck about them right now. And a lot of those motherfuckers have reneged on their shit. So I don't want to hear about them motherfuckers either. But, but go ahead. Who has called her out? Because right? even, even, even Santos, I didn't forget. I didn't forget that she was, uh, uh, I got a decision to make. I, I got to get it cleared. <laughs> From, you know, I need I need a police clearance. Uh, I need a, a fucking uh, 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 a fucking passport ID. Yeah, all that shit. I remember that shit. But 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 props to props to Talia Santos for wanting to get back in there with motherfucking bullet. Props to her. Okay. No, she ain't fought in months. Neither has Valentina, which got us in this fucking predicament to begin with. But the bottom line is props. To Talia Santos for wanting to get back in there with the fucking bullet. All right? This is my fucking channel. <laughs> my rules. I don't give a damn if she didn't have a recent fight. She had a recent call out of the bullet. So salute. Salute to Talia Santos. This week's Savage of the Week. All right, everybody. Um, it's good to... Uh, Get back to this whole WMMA thing. Hope everybody has a good weekend and uh, have something that's greasy, beefy, and cheesy on, on on the savage. You know, eat eat right for you this fucking weekend because that's what I'm getting ready to do. This is the rawest and the realest W's. MMA podcast. My mouth is dry as fuck, y'all. This is Savage W. MMA fan. And I'm out.